It's been a while since I've done a video uh, where I'm reading from a book or a publication or a piece of paper, but I was going through some um, stuff that I put away years ago, and uh, when I was researching the Secret Society stuff, New World Order, you name it, and I forgot about this, but I came across this, and uh, read through it a little bit, and I thought, huh, this is really, yeah, I've interesting and I think worth sharing because it talks about a hidden brotherhood called the Great White Brotherhood. Of course, it's mentioned in various secret society uh, uh, books, publications, magazines, etc. Uh, I, mean, um, I guess it depends on your source. Some uh these secret societies, this particularly New Age, talk about this great white brotherhood existing somewhere in the Himalayas and Tibet. I know the Theosophical Society talks about that, but this reveals here that this uh, great white brotherhood is not that at all, but it's actually, well, let me read this. Rosicrucian Writings Online, the Great White Brotherhood, some important and interesting facts regarding this mysterious organization. By the Imperator H. Spencer Lewis from the Rosicrucian Digest, February 1935. Quote, A short time ago there was published in the Rosicrucian Digest the substance of an interview with one of the great Rosicrucian masters of Europe. And in the interview, reference was made to the visible and invisible masters and to the great white body of masters who composed the spiritual board of directors of the recognized and affiliated esoteric organizations of the world. Many questions pertaining to the Great White Brotherhood have been asked by our members as the result of the publication of that interview, and I feel that there may be some misunderstanding regarding the subject in the minds of many of our newer members, as well as a few of our older members. The first and most serious error that exists in the minds of many regarding the Great White Brotherhood is... That the Brotherhood is some sort of definite fraternity living as a community or as a secluded and exclusive physical organization somewhere on the top of the Himalayas or on some mountain in Tibet. And that this organization or secret school is as definitely and materially composed, systemized, systematized, regulated, and objective in every sense as any physical organization of man anywhere on earth. This understanding of the Brotherhood is a serious error and makes it possible all the other errors of understanding and connection with the Brotherhood. Another idea associated with this error is that all of the great leaders, masters, or spiritual teachers in the Great White Brotherhood are of the Buddhistic, Buddhistic faith and belong to the strange cult of so-called mystics living in the secluded parts of Tibet and associated with the various Buddhistic or other monasteries under the spiritual direction of the Dalai Lama, who was their spiritual potent, potentate until recently when he passed on from this earth plane and transitioned. We have tried to make plain in the Rosicrucian Manual, in the article dealing with the Great White Brotherhood, that the only brotherhood of this kind, which the Rosicrucian Order of AMORC, that's Ancient Mystical Order Rosicruci, in each land has ever recognized is that invisible body of mystics composed of the most exalted and advanced mystics or spiritual leaders of various lands. Some of these may be properly classified as followers of the Buddha religion. And most certainly some of them cannot be thus classified. Certain it is that not all of them composing the inner lodge or great, great white lodge of the brotherhood as the board of directors or inner controlling circle, do not live exclusively or periodically in Tibet, India, or any other special locality. And none of them, so far as we have ever learned, were completely under the rule of dictatorship of the Dalai Lama. In the article in the Rosicrucia Manual called Part 10 of the book with the title, quote, The Great White Lodge and the Attainment of Psychic Illumination, unquote, it is distinctly said that there are 12 great masters composing the Holy Assembly of the Great White Lodge, and that some of these are on the cosmic plane, while others are on this earth plane, directing and inspiring the work of the so-called Great White Brotherhood. And it is said in this same article that the Great White Brotherhood is the school or fraternity of the Great White Lodge, and into the invisible brotherhood of visible members, every true student on the path prepares for admission, unquote. 
So, so far, we're learning in this article that, of course, just like many of the, of the other secret society publications, they admit of an inner controlling circle, an inner brotherhood. And that this is what they mean by the Great White Lodge. So, it doesn't matter what secret society you belong to. If you're not in the top, 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 you don't know anything. And it's stated. I'll give you that quote by Albert Pike after I'm done here. If you're not a part of that inner circle, you know, unless you're doing this research that I'm doing and getting the hints and clues, you know, I'm not saying that I know every secret, whatever, but, you know, they do reveal once in a while a little bit of what they truly are all about in their writings and various other stuff so okay anyways just from these statements alone our members who should be familiar with all these statements contained in the manual since its first publication in 1918 and which has had a very wide circulation with many editions during the past years will see that we refer to the great white brotherhood and the great white lodge as an invisible organization, and that while some of the members or masters composing the Holy Assembly or intersection of the Great White Brotherhood may be invisible by their present existence in the cosmic, the general membership of the Great White Brotherhood is composed of those visible members who have attained cosmic illumination, and in the very highest, sense, highest degree of unfoldment. It will be noted that this being so, the general membership of the Brotherhood is limited, for there are few. So there you go. There are few. Comparatively speaking, of all the people on the earth playing today who can or will attain in any one incarnation the utmost of unfoldment and development which would take them into membership in the invisible organization of the Brotherhood. Did you hear that? So... All these people in the lower rungs, who some of them maybe have been there, whatever secret society, uh, for years. I just don't understand it. You know, your own books and your own writings clearly state here that, you know, the few really do make it. The few who are considered worthy. In the article in the Rosicrucian Manual referred to, we read in another paragraph that, quote, the student who attains membership in the Great White Brotherhood after due preparation and real worthiness first discovers this by becoming conscious of having passed through a series of events constituting a true initiation. It is explained, then, that this series of initiations or degrees of advancement are not those which are given in a lodge or any visible form of organization, or at the hands of any worldly teacher or leader, but constitute cosmic initiations. From this it must be understood, and would be understood by any rational thinker, that initiation into the Great White Brotherhood is not something that is conducted in any particular building, temple, monastery, or other plans in any particular city, state, or country of the world. The idea that there are certain temples of the Great White Brotherhood in Tibet, or up in the Himalaya mountains, or anywhere else on the face of this earth, where aspiring persons may go, and through an agreement to certain rituals and the dogmatic participation in certain forms of ceremony, or through a period of devotion and prayer, pass an examination and be formally, physically, and materially admitted into the membership of the Great White Brotherhood is erroneous and without any foundation in any of the statements made by our organization." But it must be admitted that there is so much misinformation published in the Western world regarding the Great White Lodge and the Great White Brotherhood that neophytes and adepts alike are led to believe that there is a definite supreme monastery of the Great White Brotherhood in Tibet and that branches of this monastery have been established in very parts of the world and that emissaries or specially qualified teachers have been set forth, sent forth from the supreme monastery in Tibet to various countries to prosecute to proselyte or select suitable persons and prepare them for a formal ceremony which will make them members of the Brotherhood. In the Rosicrucian Manual, we have stated that, quote, the sublime joy of cosmic consciousness or divine illumination leading to contact with the Great White Brotherhood can be known only through experience. You will realize, of course, that the Great White Brotherhood and the Great White Lodge have no visible organization. 
They never come together in one united session. Their members are never assembled in any one meeting. They have no temple known by their names, and they have no earthly rituals, physical organization laws, or material form as a brotherhood or lodge. They're scattered throughout. Realizing how misleading many of the popular stories regarding the Great White Lodge really are, the same article also states, quote, Therefore, our members will realize that statements they see in print or hear to the effect that a branch of the Great White Lodge is located in some city and is issuing secret books of instruction, etc., are not only untrue, but impossible. In one of our other books, Rosicrucian Questions and Answers, with complete history of the order, the following statement is made in the questions and answers section. Quote, With the Great White Lodge and its ashramas and monasteries in several lands of the Orient, providing a place for the most evolved workers of the organization to come together and devote their lives to the inner work of the Brotherhood, there is no reason for the maintenance of many movements or schools under various names. Unquote. We have tried to make it plain that the Rosicrucian Order of AMORC and the Rosicrucian activities generally throughout the world is only one of the channels that has been used and is still being used by the Great White Brotherhood for the development and progress of man's own spiritual and esoteric unfoldment and for the improvement of civilization. Okay? I'll repeat that in case some of you might have missed that. We have tried to make it plain that the Rosicrucian order of AMORC and the Rosicrucian activities generally throughout the world is only one of the channels that has been used and is still being used by the Great White Brotherhood. Okay, I'm going to stop there. So, this article admits, now I know that they sometimes write things and they partially reveal the truth. And right here is the truth that this is just one brotherhood out of many that is used as uh, many one of many channels used by the top, you know, the 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 inner circle of the brotherhood, the uh, um, the invisibles. <laughs> the Rosicrucians called them invisibles, meaning you know, nobody really knows on the bottom rung of these organizations who they are or where they are, but they're scattered all over the world. But anyways, the Rosicrucian order of AMORC has never made the absurd statement made by some other organization that it was chartered by or held any power of authority from the Great White Lodge or Great White Brotherhood as a special branch of the invisible organization to which we have been referring. We do claim that the Rosicrucian activities throughout the world in the past and in the present form of them, as being carried on by the AMORC in all lands, represent one of the important and one of the oldest of the still existing channels of the Great White Brotherhood, and have often so been recognized simply because of its larger membership and its greater worldwide establishment and affiliations. But we know, and most of our highly advanced members know, that there are other channels through which the Great White Brotherhood is functioning, or through which the Holy Assembly of the Great White Lodge is inspiring and urging certain esoteric, mystical, and spiritual ideas and activities throughout the world, or in special forms, in definite localities or countries where some existing need warrants a special form of the activities or a special manifestation of one of its channels. To illustrate what is meant by these last few words, I may indirectly infer as an example that in the United States of America at the present time, and for the past year or more, there have been in operation certain activities on the part of certain individuals inspired and urged by the Great White Brotherhood leading to the elimination and correction of some specific social, political, and economic affairs, and that these special activities directed by the Great White Brotherhood through a number of individuals more or less definitely associated together constitute a special and temporary channel of the Great White Brotherhood that came into existence within the past few years and will cease to exist as a special channel in another few years when its special mission has been completed. It may not be more definite than this because of certain secrets that are necessary in the carrying on of this work for the betterment of the country 
and the upholding of the ideals and fundamental principles of the Constitution of the United States and the support of the President and his Cabinet in carrying out the excellent ideas that have been inspired in their minds. <laughs> oh, gosh, that's hilarious. Mentioning freedom. Oh, sorry. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, there's still some time. There's some stuff to go. Now, this is some emissions here, as far as I'm concerned, man. I mean, this was, what, 1935? Uh, that was right around uh, about five or six years before World War II. So I wonder what a, a special um, mission it was doing in the United States. I wonder. Certain activities, yeah. To the elimination of some specific social, political, economic affairs. I wonder what's special. We know that after World War One, you know, they tried to establish the League of Nations. That failed. This is right around when World War Two was just picking up. What were we? We were getting. We were gonna. We had. We weren't involved yet in it. Obviously, till 1941. But I'm thinking whatever means to help bring about the one world. Communist, socialist government. But yeah, I mean, right? That is a hell of an omission. But he can't say much more because of certain secrets that are necessary. See, whoever's in the lower rung and, and has read this and the light bulb didn't go off in his head. Just no comment. Anyways. Throughout the ages, the Great White Brotherhood has created special channels at special times in the history of civilization and the development of man's consciousness, and some of these continued for a century or more, while others lasted for only a few years, and a few other channels have continued through all the ages to the present time. Naturally, no person who steps upon the path of esoteric unfoldment in development can be guaranteed by his teacher, leader, advisor, or group that as a pupil or as an advanced adept, he will ever actually attain membership in the Great White Lodge or Great White Brotherhood. You hear that? You want to be a part of an organization where at the top you know you you have no idea what they're about. They don't tell you. They don't even tell you. You read some of their other stuff. They don't even tell you who the members are at the high at the high up higher ups. And they say right here that uh, you're not guaranteed. No person can be guaranteed that they'll ever attain this, this membership. You might, you know, the ones at the top could be psychopathic murderers, which, you know, we know at this point that <laughs> that's probably the case, right? Anyways, um... It is the hope, the desire of every pupil and every adept to someday attain such worthiness and to make such contact. And it is the ardent desire of every teacher and guide that his pupil or peoples will attain such membership, even if he, as an advanced, long-experienced leader and teacher, has not made that contact himself. For any person or group of persons, therefore, to join any organization or take up studies under any teacher or professed leader with the belief that personal, private, or any other form of instructions in the esoteric and mystical principles will put him automatically or essentially in contact with the open door of the Great White Brotherhood and assure him eventual membership in the organization is absurd and ridiculous. From all these remarks, it must be apparent to our readers that there are two forms of mystic brotherhoods existing in the Orient. One generally referred to as the Great White Brotherhood, located in connection with the monasteries of Tibet, and more or less under the direction and control of the former Dalai Lama, and essentially Buddhistic in nature, and having a formal organization of some kind, and the invisible Great White Brotherhood to which we refer in all our literature— and which is not a part of any specific movement or body in Tibet or any other, other land. By this, we mean to intimate that the terms great and white do not necessarily apply to any religious cult or any specific organization. They refer to a body of eminent 
and highly advanced individuals whose ideals and purposes are pure white in their spiritual motives, hmm, the word spiritual, yeah, their definition of that is kind of a joke, in behalf of man, in the, in the fulfillment of cosmic laws, regardless of any creed or any religion, regardless of any country or place or nation of people. Those representatives from India or Tibet or other places in the Orient who visit America or other parts of the Western world as... Swamis or as gurus or as or other spiritual leaders wearing oriental garb and affiliated with the Buddhist church or some other oriental religion and claiming that they are emissaries of the great white brotherhood of Tibet or India may be all that they claim to be. But nevertheless, the great white brotherhood to which they refer and which they may represent is not the great white brotherhood referred to in our literature. But again, I say that some members of the brotherhood to which we do refer have been residents in Tibet and have contacted certain other monasteries there. Some of them have been of the Buddhist religion. Some of them have been students under some of the leaders of the esoteric teachings of the monasteries of Tibet, which are part of the other organization, and even the present writer has been honored with honorary contact and appointment under one of the great leaders of the esoteric schools of Tibet. But this does not make the writer of the AMORC organization an exclusive part of the monasteries of Tibet or of the other brotherhood that is an exclusive organization of Tibet and India. It is just the writer's personal association and not one that is binding upon all our Rosicrucian members or upon our order any more than would my connection with any church or any learned or mystical society in any part of the world be binding upon all the members of, members of the AMORC or all the members of my own family. In general, we agree with what was said by Frater S.J. Marx in his recent article, The Rosicrucian Digest, regarding the pretenses on the part of any foreign persons who come to America, probably in all sincerity, but presenting such claims and statements regarding their own, quote, great white brotherhood, unquote, as to cause confusion in the minds of persons of the Western world who are not aware of the fact that there are two organizations bearing a similar name of a white brotherhood, one of them having a visible, definite, physical organization with its center in Tibet, and the other, an invisible organization that is international, worldwide, free from sectarian limitations or the limitations of any creed. I haven't checked this out yet, but you can look this up and read it yourself. So when you're part of an organization and you're hearing somebody talking about that organization conspiring, but you're on the lower rungs. Keep in mind that I'm not talking about the people on the lower rungs who are basically just dupes. Sorry. I mean, they're my good, well-meaning people and may be smart, but if they're a part of that organization at this point, and I have other sources that talk about an inner circle. Here's from Manly P. Hall. Rosicrucian and Masonic Origins by Manly P. Hall, 1901 to 1990. From Lectures on Ancient Philosophy, An Introduction to the Study and Application of Rational Procedure, The Hall Publishing Company, Los Angeles, 1st Edition, 1929, page 397 through 417. Quote, Freemasonry is a fraternity within a fraternity, an outer organization concealing an inner brotherhood of the elect. Before it is possible to intelligently discuss the origin of the craft, it is necessary, therefore, to establish the existence of these two separate yet interdependent orders, the one visible and the other invisible. The visible society is a splendid camaraderie of free and accepted men enjoined to devote themselves to ethical, educational, fraternal, patriotic, and humanitarian concerns. The Invisible Society is a secret and most august fraternity whose members are dedicated to the service of a mysterious Arcanum Arcanorum. And he goes on. I'm going to skip one line because this because I wanted to read something even a more uh, criminating that he says here about the uh, fact that only a few um, really get involved in this inner brotherhood. In each generation, only a few are accepted into the inner sanctuary of the work. But these are veritable princes of the truth, and their sainted names shall be remembered in future ages, together with the seers and prophets of the elder world. 
Though the great initiate philosophers of Freemasonry can be counted upon one's finger, yet their power is not to be measured by the achievements of ordinary men. They are dwellers upon the threshold of the innermost masters of that secret doctrine, which forms the invisible foundation of every great theological and rational institution. So there you go. Another source. There's an inner circle that only a few hand-selected get to be involved, get, are, are allowed to be, you know, are allowed to be members of. Sorry. It's, I've been working all day, so I'm still kind of, like, tired, but I need to stay up because if I take a nap now, then wake up in a couple hours and I can't sleep and... You know, you know how that goes. Uh, and this elect is talked about in the OTO, you know, agreed upon. The OTO uh, have this on a number of, of this stuff. This is a revised OTO constitution of 1917 by Freighter Merlin Theodore Roos. He's one of the co-founders. Uh... The outer head of the order. Yeah. INRI, Constitution of the Ancient Order of Oriental Templars. Introduction. Let it be known that there exists, unknown to the great crowd, a very ancient order of sages, whose object is the amelioration and spiritual evolution of mankind by means of conquering error and aiding men and women in their efforts of attaining the power of recognizing the truth. This order has existed already in the most remote times, and it, it has manifested its activity secretly and openly in the world under different names and in various forms. It has caused social and political revolutions, proved to be the rock of salvation in times of danger and misfortune. Yeah, I'm going to... Skip down here real, really quick. While numberless societies, associations, orders, groups, etc. have been founded during the last 30 years in all parts of the civilized world, all following some line of occult study, yet there is but one, yet there is but one ancient organization of genuine mystics which shows to the seeker after truth a royal road to discovery, the lost mysteries of antiquity, and to the unveiling of the one hermetic truth. This organization is known at the present time as the Ancient Order of Oriental Templars, Ordo Templi Orientis, otherwise the Hermetic Brotherhood of Light. And you can read this. Uh, yeah. It's an interesting... Uh, anyways, so we went through that. What else was I going to read? I knew I was going to grab something. Oh, yeah, I was going to grab um, Morals and Dogma. Don't fall. Okay. Okay, and this is Albert Pike, and I need to get quotes from all, all, all uh, other uh, initiates on this, where he says basically that you know, because you're going to have these lower level people, maybe if they hear this or if they heard my other videos, you know, coming up to me saying, claiming that I'm wrong or something or whoever is wrong. If there's no conspiracy, you know, in my secret society, you know, and they're on the lower rung of initiation and, you know, and they, they, they even acknowledge that at the top there's this inner circle and that they don't know anything about the inner circle. But anyways, this is from uh, Albert Pike, Morals and Dogma, page 819, quote, um, The blue degrees are but the outer court or portico of the, of the temple. Part of the symbols are displayed there to the initiate, but he is intentionally misled by false interpretations. It is not intended that he shall understand them, but it is intended that he shall imagine he understands them. Their true explication is reserved for the adepts, the princes of masonry, So he, uh, so a lot of people don't even know what this 
you know, how far this brotherhood and these, uh, the, you know, the, the highest adepts of the, of all, of all these orders have infiltrated our society, how deep this deception is, which is why many of my earlier videos, I was showing how I had just had this feeling in my gut after doing all those exposures of the early leaders of the so-called truth movement, like Bill Cooper and, uh, Ralph Epperson and many others, Though I'm not accusing Ralph Epperson, I did talk with him over the phone. I don't think that he was, uh, I mean, I don't know at this point. All I know is that I, I read in his book, he misquoted Pike, because I read that book before Morals, Morals and Dogma, and it's, a, and it's a clear misquote. But according to him, you know, he acknowledged what I was pointing out, but he said that Pike was speaking symbolically, and he didn't even mean what he said. It didn't make much sense to me, but that's what he what he told me, that Pike wrote... Pike was symbolically saying that, but that's funny because in the in the book that I was reading by him, he wasn't speaking symbolically. He gave no hint, suggestion to that. That that that's no. He said flat out. Albert Pike says on page eight, you know, you know, thirteen, blah 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 blah. He didn't say anything about Albert Pike speaking symbolically in the passage. No. He said Albert Pike said that. So you know, I'm whatever. I know that's not something I should be dwelling on, obviously, right? Because I'm feeding myself here, but what was I going to grab here? Yeah, that's right. This guy right here, Louis T. Cullen, or these guys, Secret Brotherhood of God, they affiliated with Aleister Crowley a little bit, and What's interesting about this is, uh, and I and I kept this uh, marked because I was like, hey, you know, keep talking about this new world order like it's a conspiracy theory. It don't exist, right? Well, here you go. I got like probably ten plus quotes from secret society, from the sources of the secret societies themselves, calling for world government, saying, uh, suggesting and hinting at and, you know, implying that they're behind the move towards this, creating this international order. So, you know, it just drives me crazy why people uh, freaking don't get it. So, okay, you're a conspiracy theorist. Sorry, I... I am uh, trying to find that quote in this book here. If you bear with me here. Sorry. Is it here? To those who know this stuff, you know, I'm not like, I, I'm sure you're like looking at this going, well, we, we knew that. But there's also some people on here who might watch this who don't know. And I, and I, and I want to base my whole, you know, I want to make sure that my channel is, there, there you go, I found it. Anyways, that my channel and the information that I present is flawless, is irrefutable. And you can look up, you can look me up the stuff that I quote and find out that it's true. I didn't take anything out of context, and that's my goal, to make sure everything is truthful and presentful. But anyways, this is uh, this book right here, and um, anyways, I'll just, I'll just read it. It's on page uh, 9, the introduction. We are approaching a turning point when the world as we know it will end, and a new world order will begin to replace the old. Hear that? New world order will begin to replace the old. Few things happen overnight, but time is critical and changes will be rapid as global conditions require new world organizations and new worldwide solutions to problems arising from the past. Just wanted to add that in there. We know. It's irrefutable at this point. Right? Um, let me... There is a quote in here, uh, the 68th Convocation book, where, matter, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that possibly my next video. Come on, okay. I'm going to make that my next video, but uh, there's a quote in there talking about how they, you know, have, throughout history have been behind, you know, revolutions and been behind this. 
then or, you know originating movements to create change to bring about revolution you know nobody ever thinks you know some of these people that I've argued with about the about the you know these issues regarding the truth movement you know nobody's ever uh, you know thought about that like hey you know what if this uh, movement was a movement they originated after all they talk about they originate movements it's just funny how they all you know most of them you know what do they all have in common jordan maxwell bill cooper david ike and all of them they all eventually teach the new world religion even if you pretend to speak out against the new age religion but then you turn around and say you know the apostle paul was an initiate of the mysteries it's a little tiny thing that seems insignificant to the average joe but but if you uh actually have done the research and you've read the Bible yourself, you'll find out that's just complete deception. And there's an agenda behind that. And the, the deeper I get into this, the more maybe it'll become clearer to people. Um, I have other books and stuff I want to read. I, I haven't even finished going through all the, uh, you can look back on my past videos and I do, I read from a lot of these books, a lot of revealing stuff. Um, and uh, I really haven't got to even all of them yet, where they're calling for a new world order, suggesting working behind, implying that they're working behind the scenes, you know, special secret work. But, you know, I'm doing these videos, too, in light of the fact that, you know, I understand that there's this problem with the Zionist thing and the... and. Judaism, but at the same time, I'm not wanting to make that my entire focus, 100, like my entire focus, focus, because there are other things involved, there are other organizations involved, and one of them is these mystery schools, and, you know, I called the synagogue one time, I don't remember what, but I just was curious, and I just wanted to ask this synagogue if they practice the Kabbalah. Is this a synagogue? Is it be at your main main uh, um, um, teaching in your religion that the, the Kabbalah? I'm sure they they teach out of the Talmud, and then you know the Talmud isn't the best thing in the world. That from what I've researched on it, I have. But I, but then again, I haven't grabbed the Talmud myself and read it the original as it is. I've just been hearing from other people or reading uh, other translations made by other people what the Talmud teaches regarding Jesus being boiled in his own hot excrement, or uh, he's the son of a whore, uh, it's okay to, to you know, have sex with three-year-old girls or something. Um, I haven't, um, I'm just reading from other translations. I'm not pulling the actual Talmud out and reading it myself. So I keep those things in mind, and, well, I can see that. There's many cults that <laughs> are very immoral and uneth unethical like that, so... These secret societies are are a bunch of are a bunch too that are like that. But do we make Jews our focus? Well, it's right out of these that I just read here. It says that this inner organization basically is a group of people in all ranks of life, all religions. So you're going to have fake Christians who are initiate who are really initiates of this order. You're going to have fake even fake Jews who are initiates of this order. Guess what? You're going to have fake Muslims. Who are part of this order. You're going to have fake atheists. That's why you see the hidden hand, like for instance, George Washington, the father of freedom, as we're told. And then you're going to have that same, the, the same hidden hand symbol uh, shown by with Karl Marx, who is the basically the opposite of what George Washington, you know, represents, or Karl Marx, Karl Marx represents communist oppression. So they work both sides of every issue. They're working behind the scenes in all levels of society to steer it and guide it to their final goal, the great work. And that's what I think needs to be focused on. Not like it's like during the Obama years. You remember when the focus, I remember, where the focus on the alt-right was Islam, 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 Muslims, Muslims, Muslims. You know, that started to drive me nuts. Matter of fact, I, that's when I began to see that the... Uh, this truth movement has pretty much left the truth and has decided to take on the talk, you know, a, you know, uh, decided to uh, 
you know, become another Fox News, just a little more radical. Fox News, talk a little bit about the New World Order, but don't really talk about the deep stuff that people need to know. We just, you know, echo Fox News talking points. Islam, Muslims, Muslims, liberals, liberals, liberals. Well, I think the same thing is going on with uh, the Jews. I understand that that needs to be addressed, and and I'll do more videos on that if I can. And and um, but yeah, I just think that when people are just focusing on one group, they're you know, I mean, is there's more than Israel that, that's going on in their agenda. There's also other parts of the world that are a part of their you know, it's like Saudi Arabia. And other places and whatever, wherever they're poisonous uh, selves have infiltrated. Yeah, they're steering the whole world towards their final goal. And they're probably almost there considering where we're at now. It might even be kind of useless to... Uh, share at this point all this information right because it's so in your face today but i've done this research i've before i've done these videos i tried talking with people and people at work i mean i've even lost i even lost a couple jobs before told to stop talking about things and because i would take advantage of my free time hey share what i know for the past uh, 14 or 15 years now, something like that, when I started kind of hearing about the New World Order. But yeah, um, so that's just the way it goes, I guess. Uh, I mean, there. did you catch that uh, clip? You should go check out Veritas, Veritas 1984's channel. He, he, I, think he, I think that guy's got a beef with me because he didn't like my... Uh, the opinions about Bill Cooper because it's a channel that promotes Bill Cooper. Um, but he does post some good stuff once in a while and he caught on his TV a news reporter basically saying, I, and I think she said, one in five Americans are, uh, I don't want to misquote her directly, you can just go to the, check out the video. It's coronavirus NWO. But yeah, he's, he caught that with on his TV, you know, um, and uh, she she mentioned hey, the the states that are under lockdown in a new world order. Whatever. So that's how open they are with that now. So I don't even know what this really does, if it does anything at all. <laughs> oh, man, we're in so much trouble. Well, take it easy. Thank you for hearing me.